Text me, tell her I'm gonna be back. Let's talk. <laughs> that sounds dope, dog. Yeah. Ah. That's it, yeah. Nice. I don't know, I've never been like so content with like these. These takes is coming out pretty good. On, man, we can't miss. That's why it'd be, it's cool to still work while we ain't sleeping. For real. Like, I, just need, I need some freaking caffeine or something. We could, I mean, well, we, you can't run anywhere. Well, uh, I can't run anywhere either. Um, um, we don't have a car. That's what I'm saying. That's my point. And they know coffee spots. They here. not have coffee here, bro. Like, TJ That's, don't drink coffee? They drink tea. That's their thing. What the heck? Texas dude. Pop style. You tell them you come back. They'll be a considerate. You know you coming no, back. No, no, I'm crazy. just saying like, it, do it. Do you have coffee? I thought you asked him that yesterday. Hey, bro, do you guys have coffee in the crib? If they, I mean, if they don't, we'll. I'll probably just make caffeinated tea or something. They might have it. They might have some caffeinated tea. Yeah. I'm looking directly in the camera right now. I want the world to know um, it's going down, man. And when I say it's going down, I mean it's going up. Ha! I'm all the way up. <laughs> All that I love is in truth and integrity I'm on your blog, that means you wouldn't check for me I mention God and you losing respect for me Loser insane and refusing my therapy Cool, prejudice just isn't there Ah Good start, alright, here we go again Oh, Cor, what's up? Try not to suck this time Here we go Prejudice just isn't there for me There for me, why do I keep saying that? Prejudice Came here, I told her, like yesterday We came here and worked you know what I mean, hours straight, like from 12, we got here at 12 ish, mm -hmm. 12 to midnight, literally, lunch breaks, you know, food breaks. All right. I was telling Lance about For that sure. time where I fell asleep standing up in here. Yeah, we both fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's going down literally. You know what I'm saying? You hear what I did? I said it's going down literally. You know what I mean? Cause the, cause the mic is going down. See these, these jokes are gonna get you signed. One yeah, day. bro. <laughs> signed to the trashiest Woo! comedic huh? group ever. None, bro. You good? It's, it's funny stuff. as I'm you know no, writing no the shit, project. Bro. I try to think of uh, things ahead of time, cause I know I'm gonna critique myself later. So trying to figure out different aspects that I know I want to hit. Certain topics I know I want to hit. <clears throat> and I also just think about kind of making things that I can perform that's kind of uh, concert friendly because, I mean, obviously I don't make any money um, selling any of this music. And so, you know, I get it from shows. So I'm thinking about that. But it's funny how everything get rocked when something would happen and reality would hit you. Uh, remember when I told you I saw hate in their eyes? So Black Lives Matter is a great way to survive. You said it's propaganda, another way to divide. What you call an agenda, I call staying alive. Nah, you're not a bigot for not getting it. Look, I got love for you and you got love for me. I just, I don't have the privilege of ignorance. Though at times I wish I had the luxury. But it seems I live inside a system where they victimize the villains and they villainize the victims. And they don't criticize the killers if the victim's black, man, and ain't no sympathizing with them. So why you were trying hard to debate? Really not understanding, but trying hard to relate. Ignoring the struggle, I'm trying hard to escape. Homie, I was in the jungle and praying not to be prey. Praying I could be safe, cause this cop was on the side of me. Saw me in the driver's seat, he just threw his brights on. Then he turned where I turned, he followed me four blocks, he finally threw his lights on. He doesn't like the tone of my voice, but all I'm really asking is what the reason for this was. I handed him my card, then he grabbed me by the arm, tried to snatch me from the cars, and I was reaching for his... This, this like, string of events um, of just black man after black man after black man dying at the hands of police. 
And um, it struck a chord with me. One, because this type of harassment is something that I've gone through since I was, I can think early back as like 17, 18, just being, you know, being pulled over, being slammed to the ground, being profiled, been stopped and frisked, been a suspect, been a suspect with a gun. Um, you know, I've had, I've walked down the street and had officers pull out their pistols. I'm just walking down the street. And, um, you know, now we're in this era where, um, everybody has camera phones and all this stuff. So I'm just literally witnessing murder after murder after murder. And I'm starting to see the underbelly of America and the opinions of everybody on, on my Facebook feeds and it is just crazy, man. I moved to political arena. And then, after that, he moved into Jesus. <laughs> well, I want to ask you, yeah. to ask you about that, yeah. because you, you said, one of you said, oh, no one wants to hear about that. I'd actually like you to tell me about that. Just, just. <laughs> well, one of the things that, um, that I learned, um, my life changed around in uh, 1980. If our world going to truly be the kind of world that I would like to see it to be where we care for each other. Not necessarily, I hope we all love everybody, but care for everybody, mm -hmm. see everybody equal. Men don't have to have a change of heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We cannot legislate a man's heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only God can change a man's heart. That voice was uh, the voice of my grandmother. She did a lot of work here for civil rights here in Milwaukee, and, and she marched with Martin Luther King. She uh, she fought for education reform here. And so she was being interviewed about those uh, those things that she fought for. And um, this was the very end of the interview. And she said something that was profound in that. She said that we can't legislate a man's heart. And it's true. Are we going to get it now? Yeah. Are we going to sign to do it now? Yeah. Are we going to die for our freedom? You know, that there's nothing that we can do to change a man's heart. You know, it's deeper than race. It's, it's deeper than political party. It's deeper than that. The corruption starts in man's heart. And laws can't change that. So how do we change a man's heart? I can't do it. But I believe, I know, that Jesus can because he did it with me. So why not just communicate that? above any musical system of what's going to be hot this year or whatever it's going to be, let's forget that. I want to just change and, and say, look, forget all that. Let's do something that communicates truth and let's do something that communicates the cure.